Today's video is sponsored by Pentex. Consume. Lay waste that which Gaia has created. The planet belongs to us. Rip and tear. Ha 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 ha. Now back to our regular programming. Pentex is a mega multinational corporation, one of the largest in the world. It has also been tainted by the worm and taken over for enacting the worm's various nefarious deeds. So what was Pentex? How did it start? Originally, Pentex came from very small, simple roots. They didn't start out or intend to be the mega world polluting Gaia destroying entity that they are. Pentex is so large, it has such a huge list of subsidiaries, I will try to roll through some of them now while I continue on with the video. Many of these subsidiaries can be found in every industry. It has huge paper trails. Anyone trying to investigate the labyrinth of holding companies, the filings, the shell companies, it is designed to be complex on purpose, and its objectives are very subtle and nuanced. Not even the Guru are aware of what Pentex's ultimate goal is, nor do they know what to do about it. And I would argue that the vast majority of vampires, changelings, and even mages are unaware of just how expansive and pervasive this company is. Pentex has near limitless resources at their disposal. They actively work with Banes, they produce their own Fomori. They even work with the Black Spiral Dancers. There are also rumors in the darkest depths of society, in the hardest to find reaches of the internet, that Pentex also has vampires in its upper management. And while the company is expanding the supernatural reach at the guidance of the Defiler Worm, most of the bad stuff that's happening is done by just regular everyday humans, people who are completely unaware of the supernatural, the veil, the gauntlet, the masquerade, if you will. They are simple people just doing their jobs. Going back to a simpler time, we have to go back to the year 1865, where Pentex was formerly known as Premium Oil. The company was founded by a man named Jeremiah Lassiter. He was known as a ruthless, cunning individual, a shrewd businessman, and a bit of a dick. He began to grow in power and was able to intimidate such families as the Rockefellers and the Morgans. He was known to visit his own work sites, ones where accidents had actively happened, probably to try to downplay the media attention, the press coverage, and to intimidate the workers into not speaking out or forming unions. I'm sure he would be very opposed to all of those things. Now, Lassiter, in one of his visits to a drill site, happened to get stuck in a collapse. And while he was trapped in the cave, unbeknownst to him or anyone else at the work site, the Uktena had trapped a Bane spirit in there some years ago. The Bane that was trapped there was really happy to have something to play with, and it engaged Lassiter in a battle of psychic wills. And much to its surprise, it wasn't able to win. At least not this psychic battle of the mind. It was able to, on the other hand, kill him. Which it did. But Lassiter wasn't one of those folks to let death stop him from just being a dick. Through quick wit or maybe even dumb luck, Lassiter was able to negotiate his life. He promised that he would willingly allow this minion of the worm to possess and inhabit his body and work to make his company something great. And lucky enough for Lassiter, the creature agreed. Thus, the dark nature of Pentex was born. By order of the Defiler Worm, please like, subscribe, let this channel grow. We do the work of the worm here. Now back to the show. Now Lassiter, with the help of the Bane Spirit that possessed him, was able to turn premium oil into a just a gigantic, rich corporation. One that would give Rockefeller Standard Oil a run for its money. Lassiter was also still human. And not only was he growing his company, he was also looking at succession planning as well. And he sired a son. Lassiter was also a bit of a philanderer, and he contracted syphilis. He managed it with the treatments that were available at the time, which was 
not much, and eventually he took his own life. Now his son, Jacob Lassiter, was a screw up. He was a playboy millionaire, or at least thought of himself as a playboy. He was totally not ready to inherit the reins of the company. By this point in time, the claws of the worm had been sunk so far into this company, it really wasn't controlled by one person anymore. And the powers that be, they didn't like Jacob. So Jacob had a convenient accident while yachting one day in 1913. Control of the company was then given to a majority shareholder at the time, Colin Jenner. Jenner then convinced several of the other majority shareholders to form a five-member board of directors. My take on this is that Jenner would have been influenced by the Defiler Worm or minions of the Worm to form this board of directors, because when the board was formed by the majority shareholders, he was very surprised to find out that other members had also been influenced by the Worm. And these other board members had personal dealings with the Worm to line their own pockets. My guess is that he was trying to implement something that didn't sit well with the other board of directors. Jenner died in a fiery automotive accident. And soon after, he was replaced by another major shareholder by the name of Fulton Clark. Two major events happened shortly after Clark was elected to the board of directors. Near the time that Clark was being brought into the board of directors, he was approached by a pack of black spiral dancers. They wanted to seek an alliance with him and the company. The way they positioned themselves was that he was of their kinfolk, and I believe this was actually true because it worked. Clark saw that there was some advantages to be gained by having Black Spiral under his control, or at least under his direction. You can't really control the Black Spiral. And he allowed some of them to take key positions within the company. The next major event happened in 1947, so it was a few years later. A partnership was formed with certain members of the Sabbat. And this again was done at Clark's prompting. This act put Harold Zettler on the board of directors. Now, who is Harold Zettler? He is a vampire, Malkavian anti-tribu, and he is also not a nice person. This was the last thing that Fulton Clark would ever do within the company, because shortly after he died in another accident while inspecting a workplace. He was then replaced by Peter Culliford, who holds the position still. Culliford was born during the 16th century, so he is old. He has managed to maintain the look of a 60-year-old man. Peter first encountered the Defiler Worm in an exorcism that was being performed about 400 years ago. Now, the interesting thing about Peter is that he is not a vampire. No one really knows what force is keeping Peter looking the same age for 400 years for not having been a vampire. He certainly hasn't told anyone. Now, Peter learned the art of diplomacy, politics, negotiations, lying, all in the service of the medieval church. And those skills have been transferable to Pentax. The Worm and Peter, well, they hit it off right away. And Peter is very, very loyal to the Worm. Everything he does is in service to the Worm. Now, this doesn't mean it's been without cost. Due to the gifts that Peter is receiving, one of them being the non-aging, he has to live on a diet of human brains. This has obviously had an effect on his mental state, one that makes him pretty cold, pretty calculating. But he carries significant power within the board of directors, and even though he does have some enemies in the board of directors, no one has tried to mess with him. Among the massive list of subsidiaries that Pentex owns, it has also got its hand in several special projects. One of them is Project Deepwater. This particular project is financed by Pentex, but the owners of the project are the Void Engineers. Basically, it's an under-the-sea research platform. They are researching some technology as well as archaeology. It is owned by Endron. It originally started off as a harmless research facility, but it has since been tainted by the worm so badly it is beyond salvation. And it's starting to affect things with the Rokea, and they are very much trying to organize and take this platform down. Project Odyssey is a psychic recruitment group within Pentex Special Projects Division. 
It is led by Kiro Yamazaki. Project Iliad is also part of Pentex Special Projects Division. What they do is they find people who are adventurous, they want to explore the unknown, and they prey on this spirit of adventure. These people are taken to a special lab, and they are then turned into Fomori. Project Iliad is currently being run by a black spiral dancer by the name of Francesco. Section 12 is a special group within Pentex itself. They specialize in experimentation and research on werewolves. And real high level for them, they are trying to cure lycanthropy and stop the spread of it. Project Aeneid was an expansion to Project Odyssey. Project Aeneid had specialized in binding mind feeder banes to psychics, and it worked too well. The psychics grew to have such power when combined with the mind feeders, but they were uncontrollable. Thus, this made them very dangerous. Ultimately, Harold Zettler intervened with this particular project with a serum that allowed the psychics to regain control of their minds. They discovered that Banes like to attach themselves to humans for an extreme cause. If they're willing to kill someone for a cause, if they're willing to die for it, this is how Banes would attach themselves to people, and this information proved invaluable to Pentax, as they have been using this to further their own goals. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Black Spiral Dancers, then please click this video here now. Thank you to all of my patrons who have been supporting me thus far. Your support means the absolute world to me. If you'd like to get your name on that list, please consider joining the Patreon. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.